in, in doing that in entertaining the audience, you really have an opportunity to tell a story that, that can change their life. And I, and that's why I love true stories is I think true stories of lives transformed lead to true stories of lives transformed. John Irwin, it's great to have you on Charisma News to talk about the success of Jesus Revolution. I love that it's been out for three weeks now, and it is close to $40 million in revenue, which especially because this is a Christian film, this is a faith-based film, um, it's it's amazing the release that it's getting and just how many people's lives are being affected by this film. So welcome to Charisma News, and I'm looking forward to hearing how what your view is since this has come out. Well, I just want to say thank you to everyone that has seen the film. I mean, once again, uh, it's great to see those headlines that, that uh, you know, the faith audience shocks the industry. And uh, after such a long, a long season of an industry being rebuilt, I mean, uh, the last three years have been the most disrupt disruptive time ever in the history of, of, of theatrical movies. And so to see this movie um, really reinvigorate people's excitement for this type of movie is incredible. You know, they mm -hmm. say, your movie ticket really is your vote. Um, but also just the movie coming out at such a spectacular time. Uh, I remember it was, it was goodness, seven, eight years ago that I bought the magazine, uh, the right. Time Magazine cover, uh, uh, Jesus Revolution. Now, after the movie's come out, if you find one on eBay, they're like a couple of grand. But back then, <laughs> it was like two, three hundred dollars. I bought this magazine and, uh, and, and I read this article uh, and I was so deeply moved by what God was doing in a generation in the most unlikely uh, place uh, with mm -hmm. amongst the hippies and college students and high school students um, at, at a very similar time, even in 2015, when I, when I bought this magazine, it felt like, man, this is starting to feel like the late sixties again, just a lot of division and despair. And it's only gotten more um, uh, uh, like that, you know, as the years have mm -hmm. gone by and, and what do they say when your pain outweighs your fear? change can begin. And, and I oh, just wow. feel like we're at this moment of desperation. And what I found in the research was that was really the key to the Jesus revolution was, was people finally being desperate enough to cry out to God. And, and, and that's when God broke through in our culture. And so the more I, I studied uh, the movement, the more I felt like, can this happen again today? And that's been the driving force that behind this movie. And so in between every movie, I can only imagine, I still believe American underdog. I've been dreaming of getting this movie made. And this has been a, a passion project for a very, very long time. So to see an idea find its time and to see God's hand of providence in the release of the film and how it's coinciding with things that are happening all around America uh, is, is really amazing to me. It just feels like we're a part of something bigger, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's a wonderful feeling. And I can't wait to see, you know, how God uses the movie as it continues uh, in theaters across America. Yeah. And I love how this film came out right on the heels of the Asbury revival and all eyes were on that, uh, for several yeah. weeks. And, you know, people are still, if they hear about the Asbury revival, people are still, their ears are perking up and they want to go see what is God doing? You know, there's this hunger that is happening in this day and age. And God put this hunger in you years ago with this inspiration for this, uh, with this magazine cover uh, and just mm -hmm. how you have so much going on eight years ago, preparing you for this. What were some of the steps in your journey? Uh, putting this film together because I mean, seriously, a film that's called Jesus revolution actually being, uh, you know, on the, on the marquee on movie theaters. I mean, having Jesus mm -hmm. up there is kind of a big deal, but having a Jesus film uh, this widespread, God had to yeah. really have some steps along the way. Can you tell me about some of those? It's a miracle. I mean, it's a total miracle that a movie studio like Lionsgate, uh, allowed us to make a film called Jesus Revolution. It's not called the Revolution. It's called Jesus Revolution, and uh, and I think it's a miracle that that everyone uh, uh, you know watching this or reading this helped create. Because when we champion uh, pieces of entertainment, doors fly open in Hollywood, and uh, and there's quite the uprising on behalf of Christianity um, in Hollywood. 
uh, right now. And, and uh, it's amazing to, to, to be a part of it. So, you know, this project has been, you know, years in the making for me. It's the longest I've ever worked on a movie. And it's amazing how God can even use disappointments, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's like he had this plan for this movie. Uh, and we had a, you know, we've tried to get this movie made several times. And when we got closest was when we had a movie called I Still Believe, uh, which was right after I, I Can Only Imagine. It was number one uh, at mm -hmm. the box office on Friday night. Unfortunately, all theaters were closed five days later. Oh. It was the weekend COVID shut down the world. So the wow. movie sort of took a bullet to the heart. And we had two movies in pre-production. We had American Underdog and Jesus Revolution in pre-production. Jesus Revolution was, was just a couple weeks away from filming. And mm -hmm. uh, John Gunn, my co-writer, was directing the movie at the time, and uh, and so the you know the plug was pulled. All productions globally were shut down, and we had to wait a very long time to make this movie because mm -hmm. we had to wait till we could use large crowds. So even in like the movie American Underdog that we made, all those crowds are fake uh, because they're right. in the stands. We we were only able to have about a hundred people on set because of all the COVID restrictions. So we waited and waited till we could make Jesus Revolution correctly, which means I was available to direct it. Uh, with Britt McCorkle. And, and so to just see that even that God even uses disappointments uh, because mm. he's got a timeline that's perfect. And if there's anything that I've taken from this is that God's timing is always better. God's timing is always perfect. And even if you're walking through life and you can't see that and things are disappointing and things are confusing, God's writing a story that maybe you can't see and it's perfect. And, and that's been a wonderful takeaway from this film. Uh, yeah. that, 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 I, that I've seen. And so again, to see this movie coming out uh, as revivals are happening around the country is incredible. I remember talking to Dallas Jenkins about this creator of The Chosen, and I'm like, we didn't sit down and have this meeting <laughs> where we're like, okay, you anchor the beginning of the month with the walking on water, and then we'll, there'll be Super, Super Bowl commercials in between, and, and we'll have our movie you know, um, at the end of the month, and we'll have a revival in between. Like, we didn't have that conversation this is something right. God just did, but it really is, you know, we, we were joking around like this, this February was sort of the month of Jesus in pop culture. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I think that's so cool to be a part of. And then the, the amazing thing was to see the Asbury revival begin. I, my wife, Beth and I were, we were in Kentucky um, a couple days into that revival. And I saw it on social media. We were working on a project. And so we were only about 60 miles away. So on day three, we drove over and just sat there and listened to what God is doing in a generation. And I remember Greg Laurie called me and said, what did it feel like? You're the first person I've talked to that, that was there. And I said, it felt just like the movie. I mean, it felt just like scenes in the movie. So wow. what's driven this project forward has, has always been, uh, God, you did it once, you can do it again. If this happened before, it can happen again, it can happen now. Mm -hmm. And um, and that's that has always been the rallying cry of this movie. So even before the movie came out to see it happening, was just amazing to me uh and it was surreal and uh and and it's it's amazing to see and then obviously to see the film so vastly overperform at the box office is it, just amazing it just you know hollywood is 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 studios are are wondering you know what still works theatrically is it only mm -hmm. avatar is it only top gun so to say that no the faith audience is hungry and underserved and if you make a great film they'll show up it was just such a wonderful thing for us to say as a community that I think will lead to many, many more of these type films being able to be released in theaters. Uh, yeah. And so it's just been a, an incredible, incredible month and of both financial success with the movie. And I'm grateful for that. But what that means is that millions of people have seen it. You know, we're going on 4 mm -hmm. million tickets being sold in just a few weeks in theaters. And, uh, and that just means that, uh, people are seeing it and lives are being transformed and whether it's people being baptized in a fountain outside the theater or in a lake the next day or praying in the theater or having worship in a theater. I've never seen the type of response mm -hmm. to a movie uh, that, that we have with Jesus Revolution. It really is on a whole nother level. Yeah, I know whenever I saw it, I had the opportunity to watch it with my wife watching a screener and just seeing that in the in our home on a, on a small screen. Um, which I definitely recommend everybody go to see it in the big screen because obviously number one, your ticket is your vote, but just some of these things of seeing these events happening that, that really happened in real life, but being portrayed mm -hmm. 
on the big screen with other people, there is something so powerful about that. But whenever I watched it with my wife, I spontaneously broke into tears and prayed and cried at the end of the film. God, use me. God, use me just like this. And um, I was just overcome. And I know that that's, that that's the experience that I'm hearing about other people um, and so people are having this true life experience because they've been watching mm-hmm. a true life story. And being that it is true to life, you have people like that you mentioned, Greg Laurie, who you're weaving his story alongside the story of Chuck Smith and Lonnie Frisbee, yeah. and you bring them all together. So obviously you had to use Chuck Laurie or um, uh, Greg Laurie as a, uh, as a resource quite a bit. Uh, can you just tell me a little bit about like with going that extra step from taking the article in the time magazine to turning this into the film with real people about real events? Well, I would just say Greg and Kathy Laurie, uh, they're some of the most wonderful friends, um, uh, that I have. And I, I have such incredible respect for him, um, as a leader and as a mentor and, and just as a friend, uh, and our relationship started, uh, with this magazine because I had read this magazine mm-hmm. and I wanted to meet people that lived the Jesus movement. And that led to a relationship with Greg and, uh, and he's just the real deal and a wonderful friend, incredibly creative. Um, and, and has, you know, an incredible heart for evangelism. I call him the last Jedi. You know, he's one of those <laughs> the last guys that can, that can put that many people in a stadium and preach, you know, and, and, uh, and and he's just become a wonderful friend, and our friendship has spanned these seven years. We've done other projects together, like the mm. documentaries on Steve McQueen and Johnny Cash. Uh, but this is the project that started it all, and this is the one that we've been dreaming about uh, uh, for years together. And and so to see it happen, um, uh, and to see it come out, you know, in the same year that he and Kathy are going to be celebrating their fiftieth anniversary is so cool. Mm. Uh, it was very important to me to make a movie that was multi multi generational. You know, screens rip our families apart much more than they bring our families together. So I wanted to make a film that you can watch with your, with your kids, your teenage kids with your, you know, I remember watching it in the premiere and it was my wife and I and our teenage daughter and then my parents. And you have three generations loving the movie Mm -hmm. for different reasons because of the different characters represented, but we really designed the film to be Mm multi-generational and, and to be a great experience. You know, I'm, I'm first an entertainer. And my, the love of my life uh, vocationally is to entertain audiences. And, uh, and so I hope to make a movie that makes you laugh and cry. And, and I've never been involved in a movie where the audience cheers during the film. Mm-hmm. But in, in doing that, in entertaining the audience, you really have an opportunity to tell a story that, that can change their life. And, I, and that's why I love true stories, is I think true stories of lives transformed lead to true stories of lives transformed. Amen. And, uh, and so we're just the we're the, we're the, we're the, we bring the story to, to people. Um, but I think a lot of people see it and say, okay, I want this to happen in my life. And uh, I want this to happen in my city. I want this to happen in, into our country right now. And, mm-hmm. uh, and that is the outpouring of the film that I'm most passionate about is people saying, can this happen again? Can this happen in my life? I felt that way filming the movie. You know, uh, I've mm-hmm. never had such a powerful day on the set of a movie as when we did those baptisms at the real pirates Cove. we went back to the real place and, and uh, I remember Jonathan Rumi, who plays, you know, uh, Lonnie also plays Jesus uh, in The Chosen, came up out of the water and he said, people are, are making real decisions. Like I'm doing this just like Greg taught me, but, uh, but this is very real for a lot of these people. And you could feel it on the day. I've never felt anything like that before. And I was saved very young and baptized at age five. But I was like, man, I, who doesn't need a fresh mm-hmm. renewal of their, I mm-hmm. need this, you know, and uh and so people are responding personally to the movie in ways that I've never experienced before. And you're right. It's a wonderful experience at home. I can't wait for people to see it at home. But there's a magic to seeing this film in a theater with other people. Absolutely. Unlike anything I've ever been involved with. There's just a feeling in the room. And it's this wonderful experience. It sort of washes over you in, in a very unique way when you're with other mm-hmm. people in, in, a, in, a, in an environment with no distractions, with a giant screen. And... Uh, I've never enjoyed watching a movie with an audience like this before. Uh, it's just a wonderful, wonderful experience. And, and, and then amazing things are happening in the theaters afterwards, especially when parents or youth pastors, you know, take, take teenagers. Um, mm-hmm. 
it's so cool to see a new generation of Christians own their faith in a unique way. And uh, that's what yeah. I felt at Asbury. And that's what I felt in theaters across America. That's really cool. Yeah, I, I I had an opportunity to talk to your brother Andy, and he also told me that that you don't like watching your films in the theater Not with other people. Uh, so why why did you start watching this film in theaters with other people? Yeah, I know you well, kind of typically, avoid that. Typically, I don't I don't watch films in a theater after they're done, just because I have to move on. And and also George Lucas said films are never complete; they're only abandoned. So. All I see is the mistakes or I'm like, oh, we could have done this better. We could have done, you know. And so typically I have to get years of distance from a movie mm. to go back and watch it um, just because I'm, you know, it, I, you know, I, 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 uh, I uh, see the flaws and, and, and uh, but there was, there's something so special about this movie and experiencing it with an audience um, and, and, and watching them watch the movie. Uh there's a feeling in the room that I've never really experienced with a movie. And so uh, even though there's no perfect movie, um, uh, the the experience of this one is just so magical that I love sitting with audiences and watching it in ways that, that I've never really uh, mm -hmm. uh, felt before with another movie. And I love all the movies that we get to make and I'm grateful for all the movies we get to make, but this is the first time I've just sort of savored watching it with an audience uh, just because the experience is so, phenomenal uh yeah and, and again i've never i've never been involved with a movie where people at multiple times in the movie cheer along with the movie um that's incredible um so so and i'm grateful that the audience loves it as much as they do yeah that is so cool i i know that uh you and your brother did a lot of stuff as you were kids because your your dad worked at a uh, christian television network yeah uh and so i'd like to hear you just tell a little bit about what that experience being in that environment has basically launched you into what you're doing now uh well with being I, making i would say yeah i would say that the best piece of advice that i can that i can um give people is that success is long obedience in the same direction and I had the good fortune of starting very early vocationally. Uh, I was 15 and a cameraman got sick at a University of Alabama football game, born and raised in Birmingham, Alabama. I was, uh, and I was, he was from this cameraman from my church that I knew I was carrying around his tripod and apprenticing for him. And uh, he was at that game as well. And so he called me and said, hey, somebody just got sick. I told him I knew a guy, get over here right now. Don't tell anyone how old you are. Don't tell anyone you've never done this before. And I went over there and I, I literally had the time of my life. Like there, it was sort of like mm -hmm. a kid joining a circus. There was my life before that moment and my life after that moment. And, um, and it, it was spectacular. And I just fell in love with, 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 uh, with film and television. And the year after that, when I was 16, my dad helped me buy a camera with money he did not have. Uh, and he helped me get a loan for $10,000 for a, oh, wow. uh, for the first editing system that you could use at home you know this was way mm -hmm. back when editing on a home computer was this was the first apple computer that you could actually edit with professionally and uh and that was the beginning of our business my brother quickly joined and my dad said dream bold dream big dream the impossible and then he said give 20 years of your life to something and 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 you'll be successful at it and uh and i think people people really overestimate you know what they can do in the short term mm -hmm. um you know whether it's weight, weight loss or business or whatever it is uh, you know, none, none of which I'm good, the, the the fitness stuff, none of which I'm good at. But I think people vastly underestimate what they can do um, over a long period of time with consistency. And and so, you know, what happened was we just had years and years and years of making things for other people. It started with promotional videos for our church or or corporate videos, or we filmed all these orthopedic trauma surgeries, a ton of weddings. And then that led to music videos that artists Michael W. Smith and Amy Grant, still for reasons to this day, I don't understand why they did it, let us do music videos for them. And that led to a career in music videos. Um, and just what Malcolm Gladwell in his book Outliers calls the 10,000 hour rule, just refining your craft and, and, and uh, getting a little better every day. And then uh, I worked on a Christian film called Courageous and, and went into directing the action sequences to that film. Uh, and it was the director of that film, Alex Kendrick, that said, uh, that asked me a wonderful question that everyone should ask themselves. He said, what is your purpose and the purpose of your work? And I couldn't answer it. It had all just happened up to that point. Mm. And that was a moment where this, 
where this, there was this fusion of a career and a life's calling. And uh, that's when we jumped into make to, to, to the, to bleeding at the bleeding edge of faith-based films. And uh, it's like Mike Tyson said, every boxer has a plan until he gets in the ring, gets punched in the face. But, uh, mm-hmm. but we started making films, uh, raising money to make them and release them. And everything finally just tipped, you know, when we had our, our breakout hit, which was, I can only imagine. Oddly enough, mm-hmm. that was about 20 years since my dad told me, Hey, give 20 years of your life to this and you'll be successful. So I think a lot of people just need to understand that sometimes there's long periods of preparation before a season of influence and, mm-hmm. uh, and don't underestimate that time of just getting a little better and a little better and a little better. The biggest point yeah. is to just wake up and improve, just get a little better at what you do every day. And if you'll stack those, those incremental improvements on top of each other, a few years go by, and you, you'll realize that uh, that you're now in a position to really influence people through your craft. And uh, and so it was a long, long, long time. What I had the advantage of was starting very early. And uh, mm. and there's never been a time to, to for kids out there. Uh, there's never been a, a more accessible time to start a career in entertainment because you you know an iPhone now is is a professional camera. You know, and so it's yeah. you can uh, you can create very early, and there's nothing stopping your journey from beginning. You know, right now. Yeah, that is so cool. There's so many amazing things that you just said in that last answer to that question that I think I'm going to have to go back and uh, take notes on what you said all over again. I love how you said <laughs> long true. obedience in a good direction is the definition for success. Yeah. Long yeah. obedience and it's all about, in a good yeah, direction. It's about, it's about, it's, you know, activity and progress are two different things, you know? Mm. And a lot of times people think, well, I'm, I'm, I've got a lot of activity and I'm going to go over here and do something and I'm going to go over here and do something. Well, you've traveled just as far and you've gone nowhere. It, the key is consistency in the same direction. Like basically, you know, taking 20 more steps in the same direction. Um, mm-hmm. And that's what's important, you know. And, uh, and so that's what we tried to, what we tried to do. And, uh, and, and I think that's the key is, is just, uh, it's just going, you know, choosing a course and going in the same direction. Yeah. Two more quick questions as we wrap up here. And I just greatly appreciate your time. What is next on the bleeding edge of faith-based films for you? Uh, what's the direction that God's, that God's leading you? Cause we've just been talking about long obedience in the right direction. Um, and then also yeah. how can we as charisma viewers, as charisma, the audience that love this, this type of film, how can we be praying for you, uh, in this, in your next phase? Well, uh, I mean, I would just um, pray for an attitude change in 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 Christianity at large. I think so many times we we have this mindset. I actually put the verse in the film. Uh, uh, Kelsey Grammer as Chuck Smith uh, says it. And by the way, he's so fantastic as a person and as a performer. Um, but basically. Uh, he says, um, he who endures to the end will be saved. And that's, hmm. that's such the mindset. I think I'm, I'm Baptist, you know, from the South and it's just like hunker down, wait for the end. All is lost. The next verse in that passage says this, this gospel, the kingdom will go to all nations, um, as a testimony. I think it's in Matthew 24. And, and that has always been the, First to-do list of Christianity. Get the gospel to the entire world. Get good news, by the way. What the word means to everyone, everybody. So Jesus says this, this to his disciples. And, you know, it'd be 1,400 years plus before the continent that we're on would even be discovered at all. Mm-hmm. And so they didn't even know how big the world was. And so in this distance medley relay of Christianity, we're finally at a point in time as a generation where we could say, we could get this done. We could get this done in our time, the gospel to the entire world. And I wish we had that mindset, you know, um, uh, you know, Jesus said to Peter on this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So a, a gate is not something anyone's going to attack you with. Gates are meant to be stormed and that mm-hmm. should be our mindset. And so I think we need to change the way we think as Christians and say that we are living in a spectacular time of opportunity. We have more opportunity for Christianity um, than every generation before us combined. And yeah, life is tough, 
but they're not feeding us to lions as a pre-show in a gladiatory, you know, right. gladiator arena or whatever. And so I just wish that we would have a renewed sense of optimism um, and hope that that the times in which we live are pretty amazing. And I think we're seeing signs all over the country that there is incredible and uh, increasing spiritual hunger in America and all over the world. And so my hope is that Jesus Revolution is one of those pieces of entertainment that says hope is not lost. This is not the end of the story. This is the beginning of a new chapter. Mm -hmm. And in entering that new chapter, we have more opportunity than we've ever had as Christians. So let's get after it. And I think in getting after it, each of us has to say, you know, what's my mountain? You know, like Caleb in the Bible says to Joshua, this is the mountain I want. God's going to, I want this mountain. For us, and an increasing number of people that want to work together, which I'm really excited about, uh, we're saying it's that hill with the Hollywood sign on it. Like that's, that's the mountain that we're called to climb. And every ticket sold, every time someone watches The Chosen on their phone or, or their television or, you know, um, we get a little more oxygen to get a little further up the mountain, you know, and, uh, and that's what's going on in entertainment. But I love that, uh, you know, Paul in Acts says of David that he, that he served the purposes of God in his generation. And that's something that we can all do. It's like, how do I serve God's purpose in my time using my talent, you know? And, uh, for us, God put a camera in our hands. Um, but we're all in this together. We all have a role to play. And I think the biggest hope that I have is that we would just change the way we think and we would change our attitude and we would dare to hope again with all that God's doing in the world today in our time. Uh, Because I think when you see the world through that lens, uh, you begin to really get excited about using your gifts to get the gospel out there to the world. Um, When you think about a movie like Jesus Revolution, because of of its success, in America and its ongoing success in theaters, it triggers what we call global output deals. And what that means is that entertainment is America's second largest export behind agriculture. Mm -hmm. And the further the entertainment goes uh, in America, the more successful it is at the box office in America, the more it triggers these global deals. So the first four countries just dated their theatrical releases. I think Singapore, Indonesia, um, and Australia, New Zealand, Uh, Latin America is gonna quickly follow. And so because we've made such noise in America, this film is going to go global, you know, mm. and, and that is that is because of of technology that couldn't have happened 100 years ago. And so that's just one illustration of the incredible times in which we live. And so my hope is that we can uh, that we can adopt a new mindset and attitude as Christians. And then also my hope is that we can continue to um, to to combat the stigma of faith-based entertainment that these films are just getting better and better and better so that they can see, be seen by more and more and more people and that we can get back to where we were. You know, uh, there was a time where Christian movies were the blockbusters of the day. Uh, there was a time where biblical epics were the Marvel movies of the day. And I think we can get back there if we, if we work together. And, uh, and, and that's my hope. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, John, I greatly appreciate you taking some time to be able to talk with us here at Charisma News. I know you're on vacation right now, which is a well-deserved vacation. Um, I hope that you get some good rest there. But thank you so much for creating this film, making uh, Jesus Revolution. uh, This Really, it's an epic film. And uh, just getting it on the big screen and just seeing what God is doing. And as you were describing how it's getting to other countries now. I'm just thinking about what Jesus said in Acts chapter one, verse eight, uh, the, the Holy Spirit was poured out and you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And by us buying tickets to go see this film in the United States, it's causing this film to start to reach to the ends of the earth. And we yeah. get to be a part of helping this message of the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, go to theaters around the world and it's going to impact more lives. So if you go to jesusrevolution.movie, you can get all the information, but basically just go to any movie theater because it's there right now. So go and check it out. Uh, enjoy the film, take a family, take friends and uh, check it out. John, it's great to have you on Charisma News. Thank you very much. 
thank you so much for getting the word out and uh and I'm, and, and it's 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 fun to be in this together and and fun to see what what all God is doing uh, uh in America uh, uh today it's it's a wonderful time to to be a Christian For almost 50 years, Charisma Magazine has brought believers to the front lines of revival and highlighted the very best of Spirit-led living. Stay connected with the worldwide move of the Holy Spirit and be inspired by Christian leaders and authors by joining with the legacy of Charisma Magazine. Go to charismamag.com to see virtual issues and subscribe to receive your very own physical copy delivered right to your door.